Well, I just found out that Wes Unsell died yesterday um, from complications from pneumonia. Oh man, I was a huge Wes Unsell fan um, growing up. So he was uh, primarily, his, his best years were in the late 60s, early 70s, going into the mid 70s. And I, that was well before, I mean, I was born in 1970, so that was well before my time. But I remember getting basketball cards. You know, they used to have those, uh, those tri-deck, what are they called, tri-car? I forgot. Anyway, I, they, uh, I had one with Larry, jo Larry Johnson, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and Dr. J on there. Oh, man. Uh, I think it was in uh, Magic Johnson's rookie year, when I think that was Larry Bird's second. Oh, that card is probably worth a ton now, and I had uh, written on it to keep my basketball stats from my little uh, basketball hoop I had inside my my bedroom. You know those little Nerf ball things. I Man, I used to play all kinds of games in there. It was fun. Hey, Wes Unsel was always on one of those cards. Uh, I had Wes Unsel cards, and I was, I was always stunned at his rebounds per game, given that he was really only six five. They list him at six seven, but uh, and, and stats on the uh, on Wikipedia or whatever it's called. But that's he's not really six seven. He was about six five or so, maybe maybe six six on a good day. But he was his first year. He averaged almost nineteen rebounds a game, nineteen. <laughs> and that wasn't uh, a time where the NBA didn't have good centers. <laughs> I mean, Will Chamberlain. Oh my goodness. You know, Kareem was around back then. I think in the late 60s, 70s, I can't remember. But anyway, you had Will Chamberlain, Kareem, uh, Bill Russell, uh, just, <laughs> you know, all kinds of centers. I forgot who the center was for the Knicks. I can't remember. But I mean, oh man, Wes Unfold, 6'5, averaging almost 19 rebounds a game his first year. Now, the problem with Wes Unsell is he's never put up a lot of points. And that's the one thing that's always frustrated me about sports, generally speaking. Uh, if, if you don't, uh, the offense always gets the uh, the accolades. But I've always loved the defense, man. That's why I always liked the Georgetown when I was growing up. Georgetown Hoyas, you know, with Eric Sleepy Floyd. Obviously, they had Patrick Ewing and stuff. But uh, man, I I just enjoyed the defense, the press that John Thompson had. I always loved that. I thought there's attacking defense, not you know the the attacking offense gets all the glory. But man, the attacking defense, I love. It's just fantastic, and they just shut people down. It was fun to watch. Of course, I my heart was with Maryland in the '80s uh, when I moved to uh, to Maryland, right outside D.C. But uh, you know, in the in the early '80s with Georgetown, man, I love their style of basketball. I'll never forget when. Uh, so, if you're watching the Last Dance of Michael Jordan, they make it seem like Michael Jordan won the championship for North Carolina against against uh, uh, Georgetown. I think it was in '82. That's not true. That's not true. There is a uh, uh, James Worthy actually won it when he stole the ball from, I think it was Eric Floyd. I think, was it? I can't remember. It was just a horrible pass. It was just a sad. I mean, the guy just, he saw that light blue of North Carolina's uniform and he thought he, just, I, he thought it was uh, the, the lighter gray of Georgetown. He just threw the ball to him. Oh, so Michael Jordan hits this shot with like eight seconds left, but Georgetown's got the ball. And I'll never forget they're on the front court right on you know a little bit above the top of the key i can't remember, i think it was i can't remember who the guy was the point guard and he just throws it to james worthy you're like oh that's one of the horrible plays i just feel bad for whoever it was it's kind of like ernest biner when he fumbled the ball I, it's just look ernest biner thank god he went to go win the uh, uh, super bowl with uh, the redskins but ernest biner what biner was a class class a uh, class football player and to remember that guy for fumbling the ball would be horrible. So thankfully he went on to, I hate to say redeem himself because that's, I don't think he needed to be redeemed. But anyway, the, uh, I just, I'm drawing, I don't think it was Eric Floyd. I can't remember who the, the point, maybe it was, who threw the ball that worthy that ultimately sealed the championship for North Carolina. But it wasn't Michael Jordan's last second shot. It wasn't a last second shot. It was eight seconds left. Thus, if Georgetown gets the rebound, there's still lots of time yet to hit foul. Um, if if, if, if uh, North Carolina gets the rebound because if Michael misses, there's still plenty of time on the clock. You see what I'm saying? I didn't like that. I say, man, you guys missed. Ah, I thought that was a little bit overly dramatic in rewriting history for the way it was. 
But anyway, going back to Wes Unsold, so he was well before my time. But he uh, he played for the Bullets when I was still watching basketball. He was a coach of the Bullets later on. And the Bullets never did much. Uh, we used to go to the Bullets a lot, actually. I enjoyed going to the Bullets. The Caps, too. But hockey is always more expensive to go to than basketball. Um, and, and I think... I think the reason for that is hockey has a more rabid fan base and so they can exploit them <laughs> where basketball they get most of their money not from attendance in the stands but from TV revenue um, and, uh, and so the interesting thing is going back to hockey uh, basketball offense versus defense hockey was definitely on the the rise kind of like Jordan did the NBA Gretzky was doing for the NHL to, uh the same time, you know, about 10 years previously, everyone knew. I mean, I remember going to DC when my dad had lived there before I moved there and going down, I can't remember downtown and, uh, they'd have these street vendors selling stuff. And I remember they had stuff they were selling Edmonton Oilers stuff. I was like, huh, hey, it's weird. Cause like in DC, but that's how big hockey was uh, becoming. Cause the offense always is a glamor. You know what I'm saying? And I just remember that. I was like, man, um, it's interesting because that was always a uh, – the offense always propels, you know, superstars. And so Wes Unsold, frankly, I don't even know if he's in the Hall of Fame. I hope he was. But because when Sus Wes Unsold only averaged, you know, low double digits of points over his career, even – I think he even averaged more rebounds than points. Um, you know, he'd never get the accolades. You might not even be familiar with Wes Unsold. Which is too bad because, uh, like I said, he was a superstar uh, without question uh, that he should, be, he should be remembered just because the grit, the determination. Kind of like Dennis Rodman, man. I guess even Barkley to some degree. Um, you know, Barkley did not have that superstar body. He was a pretty short guy relative to the NBA, and he had tons of rebounds. Robin... <laughs> The worm, just oh man, I've always been, I've always loved those defensive geniuses. And uh, you know, Robin would shut people down. I'm not sure how Barkley was on defense, but I know he got a ton of rebounds for a shorter guy. Wes Unsold obviously did too, but you don't remember him because he didn't score all the points, which is uh, which is too bad because uh, without those rebounds, there is no offense to be had. In fact, the best way you can lose in basketball is to give up offensive rebounds that's a fact so if you can't get the ball off a missed shot when you're on defense and the other team gets another shot it's like a turnover in football essentially and uh that's the best way to make sure your team loses so you i would build a team around defense even though i know everyone nowadays wants to build build it around steph curry and the michael jordan types i wouldn't i'd build it around defense I, it's interesting they don't use that full court press anymore i, I don't fall basketball that much anymore i just i never understood why I mean, I, uh, I guess because, you know, the, the idea is people can break it. I don't know. I mean, if you break it, you get an easy layup. But, man, that's cool. I don't know. It seems to me that full court press is it's fun to watch. And it's almost like a, a defense like the Ravens had, a swarming defense that can just stifle and intimidate you know, the, the team into submission. I just, oh, man, watching those – you know, defenses from the 86 Bears. I never liked the Ravens, by the way, but, I mean, you got you had to admire their defense. It just it intimidates you. I remember watching the Super Bowl between the Ravens and the Giants. I was rooting for the Giants, if you can believe that, just because I could not stand the Ravens. It's to this day, I can't stand the Ravens. But anyway, so because of that, um... You know, the Giants were in the Super Bowl. They got the ball. They got the one that coin toss. And they took to take possession. It was the stupidest thing ever. And they, they went basically three and out. And Kerry Collins looked like he was scared. It was almost like uh, Tony Easton against the, against the Bears in the 86 Super Bowl. I was like, why would you take possession, Tom Coughlin? Was it Tom Coughlin? No. It wasn't Tom Coughlin back then. It was a the guy. I'm think, I can see the guy's face. I forgot his name. Who was a coach? I was like, why would you take possession? Oh. Anyway, so RIP less unsold. You, uh, I'm not gonna say I had an impact on my life or anything, but not like Walter Payton did, but, uh, 
I've always appreciated your skill set. Uh, seemed like he's a real good guy. I don't know anything about his. I know he's born in Louisville, like Muhammad Ali was. Interesting. Where was Kareem born? I don't know where. Where is Kareem Abdul Jabal born? You know, Louis, Lou Alcindor. I know he went to UCLA, but where is he born? I don't know. But anyway, Muhammad Ali was born in Louisville. West Unsold, Louisville. It's interesting how many athletes. Was Jackie Robinson in Louisville too? Yeah, I can't remember. It's interesting how many athletes are uh, are from Louisville of all places. You know, it's not a big town in Kentucky of all places. Eh, all right, good job. Well, not a good job. R.I.P. West Unsold. Blessings to you and your family. Thanks.